Bears fans, I am backstage with the big winner tonight. He is undefeated in the squared circle. No one beats us to the punch. Um, I came out, uh, I knew he was going to come out strong. I knew he was going to sit back for a minute and feed them one twos like he just like he did. So I really studied him a lot. So um, my coach said if I cut off the distance, my jab is really going to stick him. Um, we're going to utilize my jab rather than my coming in because the jab is long, my jab is hard, and I really step into it. And that's really what won me this fight, honestly. So you prepared a little bit differently for him than some of your other fighters. He's a tall and rangy fighter. How did, were you able to close the distance so well? Um, you know, I just had to really, really capitalize and keep training on my distance. It's really something you have to train. What people don't understand is fighting is all timing and distance. That's all it is. Timing, distance, and accuracy. And if you can see my distance and my accuracy and my timing, all three of them are top notch. What was it like for you to fight in your opponent's backyard, though? To be honest, I walked out and everybody was booing. He walked out, everybody was hooraying. My coach grabbed me, it's funny, my coach grabbed me once they announced his name, so I knew what he was doing. He was not letting me get psyched out by all the crowd. So he was just trying to talk to me and say, hey, I want, but what he was doing was he wasn't letting me hear the roar to get it in my head. My coach, Joe Riggs, is the reason I'm standing right here right now. There's something in that Montana water, uh, Joe Riggs and the boys from Montana. What do you guys think? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Montana's a place, like I said before, you set up fights in a barn, we show up and fight. Montana is Montana tough, okay? We always say that, always. I have kids who, we put on shows and we pick kids out of the crowd because someone doesn't show up, but there's always someone that wants to fight, even out of the crowd jumping up and down in their basketball shorts with a, a boxing gloves that my coach just gave them. But they're ready to fight. They're always down to fight. You got injured. Let's talk a little bit about your hand. How is it feeling? My hand is numb right now still from the stitches, but it was a pretty big gash. I think I scraped one of his tooth on the way down. He had a stronger clinch than I anticipated. His clinch was stronger. He had a strong hold, really strong kid. But I, I think I countered him and I hit down and it scraped the bottom of one of his, I think, I don't know exactly what I, but it hit something. Maybe it hit his bottom tooth, top tooth, I have no idea. What's your message to other fighters in your division? Should they be scared? Honestly, there's nobody else in my division that's gonna do what I, that's gonna do more than what Howard did to me, okay? Howard hits harder than anybody I've fought. Howard has better confidence than anybody I fought. I fought him in his backyard, okay? If anybody in my division thinks that they have something more to give me than that, then uh, bring it to the table. But honestly, I deserve a belt shot. I deserve a title shot after this. The that title should be made for the 145 pound division. I'm five and one now, so. I agree, I think that would be a great fight in a 145 title fight. Who would you like to fight though at that weight? You know, I'm not really calling anybody out at the moment. I mean, if, uh, we all know Kai Stewart's running away. We all know he don't he don't want none because he'd have some. He would be standing, uh, no, he'd be back there if it was him. But nobody, nobody, I don't want to fight anybody. I want to have the belt, and the belt comes with a name. So whoever name that is, I'm going to sign the contract. How important is having such a specific fighter IQ, such a great fighter IQ that you have to the performance you put on tonight? Because you're a very smart fighter. Thank you. I really give it all to my coach. Joe Diesel Riggs is, he, he believes in me more than I believe in myself, okay? Every, listen, I didn't go out there and just fight a fight. I didn't go out there and just fight. I went out there and followed the rules. I went out there and followed the game plan from my coach who has studied the fighter I went out and fought. That's his job is to study the fighter and to make uh, make me like a robot out there. That's all I should be. I should be like a robot. Him just telling me what to do. That's all I was doing. I was just listening to him. Well, we sure hope to see you back in the squared circle next year. Before we go tonight, are there any friends, family, 
Julius Pontridge would like to give a shout out to, sir? Um, I just want to thank, uh, I just want to say, Ashley, I love you more than anything ever. I just want to say my dad for supporting me, all my friends, all my family, everyone who doesn't support me. I love you even more, honestly, because you keep my name alive. Okay, so I just want to thank Joe Riggs also. Joe Riggs is honestly the reason I'm here. Joe Riggs is my becoming one of my best friends and my mentor and my family. So I want to thank Joe Riggs a million. You couldn't have a better mentor than Joe Riggs, such a legend. I do hope we see him back in the squared circle next year. For Bare News, I'm Susan Singori, and this is... Louis Lopez. And remember, and I mean remember, no one beats us to the punch.